Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the 14th lecture and final lecture of 2020 uh, for this class. Uh, so last time we proved bot periodicity. which I recall is the statement that the loop space of u is b u times z. And we use that to define uh, the spectrum k u, which is a very important spectrum and our first genuine example of a non-connective spectrum. Uh, today, I want to give some examples about the cohomology theory and uh, the properties of the spectrum. And, uh, so recall uh, so if x is a finite space we have that homotopy classes of maps from x plus the suspension spectrum of x plus to ku are the same thing as pointed homotopy classes of maps from x plus to loops infinity ku, which remember is bu times z, sorry, point to homotopy classes. And that's just homotopy classes of maps from x to bu times z, which is just the growth in the group of vector bundles. on x. And I'm not going to explain what happens when x is uh, non-finite, uh, but uh, uh, there is a de the description of that also in terms of vector bundles, but it's a bit more complicated. So I'd rather not uh, enter into the details here. Um, and then the other thing I want to say, okay, let me write KU star, KUN, sorry, of X for homotopy classes of maps from X plus to Sigma N KU. Which is the unreduced cohomology. And for X appointed space, the reduced cohomology is going to be as you'd expect. No. Classes in, these are homotopy classes of maps in spectra. Okay, uh, that's just notation. And okay, the other thing that we know is that the homotopy groups of KU are Z when star is even and zero when star is odd. Okay. So, okay, so the first thing is that so there is a class beta in pi 2 ku uh, corresponding to 1. Uh, and remember, pi 2 ku is the same thing as reduced um, ku0 of s2 by definition, homotopy classes of S from S2 to KU. And so the quest and these leaves inside KU0 of S2, in fact, because KU0 of S2 is KU0 tilde of S2 plus KU0 of the point by the standard decomposition. Maybe I should uh, put a remark here. KUN of X is KUN tilde of X plus, uh, sorry, KUN of the point, as usual, uh, as for ordinary cohomology. Maybe for ordinary cohomology, you uh, this formula, you're used to see a formula like this, perhaps for n greater than zero, but that's just because in ordinary cohomology, the coefficients are zero outside of zero. Uh, well, here we have coefficients in all uh, non-zero even degrees. Sorry, in all even degrees. So we have to keep track of them. But anyway, 
there is this beta here. And so this corresponds to some kind of vector bundle over S2, actually a formal difference of two vector bundles to be precise. Um, and uh, the first thing I want to do is to identify who this guy is. Um, how can we describe it? And to do so, I, in the end, I decided to say something about clutching functions that I wasn't planning originally to say, but uh, this should be quite easy. So first problem, let's identify beta as, as a vector bundle. on S2. So to do so, let's talk about clutching functions. And one of the reasons why I, uh, why I decided to talk about it is that I realized that with the material that we have done, actually it's easier than one might originally think. Yes, so the question, can we describe vector bundles over sigma x over some suspension? And well, the answer is yes, because we know that vector bundles of rank D over sigma x are the same thing as homotopy classes of maps from sigma x to BUD. Okay, that's easy. We are very tempted to go uh, to, to move the sigma the other way. Unfortunately, sigma is not a left adjoint on spaces, only on pointed spaces, but we can fix this. So what is sigma x BUD star? This is vector bundles. Over sigma x together with a trivialization over the base point. That's because, uh, if you remember, recall, uh, we have a fiber sequence. Sorry, uh, this is something we saw last semester. I'm pretty sure I put this on exercise uh, where this map is evaluation at the base point. I'm pretty sure I, I gave it as an exercise. Uh, maybe last semester we say that this was a vibration and this is obviously a fiber. Uh, Uh, and so a point here is just a point, ooh, a point here together with a path here from that to the base point. So that's literally what this is saying. It's a vector bundle on your space together with trivialization on the base point. And now this we know by a junction is pointed homotopy classes of maps from X to UD. Actually, let me write it explicitly to omega UD, which is from X to UD. And I want to describe actually how this correspondence works precisely. Uh, that is uh, how from a map from X to UD, you can build a vector bundle on uh, of sigma X. And, oh, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm thinking of S2 as sigma S1. And we want to, to start from up from S1 to, well, it will be U1 and build a vector bundle there. Okay. Questions about uh, what we're doing so far? So remember, 
a map from sigma x to b u d is the same thing as a coherent diagram x b u d. That's just the universal property of the suspension. But what does it mean? I mean, what is a pointed map here? Well, there's not much. It's just a trivial vector bundle of rank D over a point. Uh, not much information there. And so its composition here corresponds to the trivial vector bundle of rank D over X. Let's pull back. We also can consider this composition here which is a trivial vector bundle of rank D over X. Well, a different one a priori, of course, there's, there's still the same, but then we give a homotopy here. And this homotopy corresponds to give an isomorphism of vector bundles. And note, this is, uh, this is not uh, the, the identity in general. I'm just giving a general homotopy. If I have the identity, I would just get the constant map here, but uh, I'm, I'm allowing different homotopies. So what does this mean is that this is phi from, uh, uh, what did I call it? Oh, I think I might not have called it. Well, okay, x, c, d to x, c, d such that phi uh, is an ISO, okay, it's an ISO, but then I want uh, phi to be the identity over the base point. That's just the fact that all these maps are pointed maps and that the homotopy needs to be trivial over the base point. And so this is exactly the same thing as a map phi from X to UD. Okay, very good. Uh, but what does it mean concretely? Suppose I have such a map so I can build, oh, sorry, this coherent diagram. How do I, how do I build my, my vector bundle? Well, the idea is I want to see sigma x as the union of two copies of i wedge x. So concretely, this is Uh, this is uh, this, uh, sorry, with the base point identified. And I can see this upper piece as i wedge x, where i is uh, the interval 0, 1 with base point, say, at 1, at one of the extremes. This is another copy of i wedge x, and they're glued together along a copy of x. That's just, if you want, uh, this is contractible. Uh, so this is actually a homotopy push out because the inclusion of X inside this I wedge X is a cofibration. And so the push, the strict push out is the homotopy push out. This is all stuff we saw last semester. And um, Dennis, can you hold on for a minute? So um, is, the, um, do you mean pointed maps, maps from sigma x to b, u, d? Yes, 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 yes. Coherent diagrams in, in, in spaces, star, pointed spaces. Can you recall, you said something about this fiber sequence somewhere above that the pointed so maps? That was just to say that, uh, I mean, I have this fiber sequence here, where this is just the, the standard inclusion and this is evaluation at the base point. This is, okay, I wrote it for, for sigma x, but that's true actually for every y pointed spaces. And um, actually also here you can put whichever pointed space you want. And this, this explains what you wrote above that um, the pointed the homotopy yes. glasses of pointed maps are vector bundles. Uh, can you explain again why you have the trivialization over the base point? So, uh, well, okay, in this case with BUD is actually super easy because BUD is, uh, is simply connected. Uh, so it's going to be, you get a long exact sequence, actually, let me, well, okay, let me 
write it here. I have a long exact sequence where you have pi one of B U B, pi zero of map from, uh, well, let's say Y to B U D map star, which is what we want to understand. This goes to pi zero map Y to B U D. Oh, uh, mm -hmm -hmm. sorry, I think I might have messed up a little bit here. Uh, no, the trivialization should come from these, but this is simply connected. I mean, I wanted to identify this object here with the homotopy fiber of this map. And the homotopy fiber of this map is, is, a, is a point here, which I can think of as a vector bundle over Y, together with a path here to the base point. Oh, I think I'm getting, uh, the, the, this long exact sequence actually is confusing because the, it's telling us that the trivial, the data of the trivialization of the base point is actually no data. It's contractible. That comes from the simply connectedness on, on UD. But let me ignore the simply connectedness on UD. For, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, it turns out that up to homotopy, this is no data, but I, I would like to carry it along anyway, because uh, I think it clarifies the difference, even if in this case, their all trivializations are homotopic, uh, because, because indeed UD is simply connected. Uh, so any path in UD is homotopy. But anyway, a point here is a point here together a path, together with a path downstairs from the image to the to the to the base point, which corresponds to the trivial vector bundle over the point. Okay, is, is this clear? Are there other questions about what I'm doing? Uh, uh, yeah, so where is UD and BUD pointed? Is it? Well, BUD is, so BUD is, is pointed by definition. It's a pointed space whose loop is UD. Ah, uh, yeah, true, yeah. But if you want to think of it as the Grassmannian, I mean, doesn't matter, pick any, any point. For example, I typically pick the inclusion of CD into C infinity as the base point of the Grassmannian, if you want to use the Grassmannian model. Uh, it's not important, uh, it's connected, so any base point will work. It's just, this is just a, uh, a choice, a fairly natural choice I make. Okay. Okay, good. So, Okay, what it boils down to here you take, so if you replace this by I wedge X and these are the base point of I wedge X, this recipe is telling you that to build a vector trivial vector bundle over this, sorry, over this upper piece, let me call this I plus and I minus to distinguish them. Uh, they're, they're homeomorphic, of course, but since I'm thinking of them as different. And I can take the trivial vector bundle over this guy, but then I'm gluing them over X times CD, well, using this, this, this map from X times CD to itself. So I have this map phi, Let's say I'm gluing by the identity here and, and phi here. So to be precise, I'm taking the push out. Sorry, uh, this is psi phi. This is a vector bundle over, over sigma x. Mm 
it's clear this condition, this is how it's called the clutching function. You take two trivial vector bundles and you glue them along phi. And the non-triviality of phi in general gives you a non-trivial vector bundle. So why am I doing this? Well, because our goal, remember, was to identify beta in KU2 of S2. Now let's see how this works. So this is a class from S2 to BU times Z. And in fact, since beta is in KU tilde, is a pointed class. So it fits in particular inside BU times zero. And it has the property uh, that when you adjoint it over once, you get a beta from S1 to omega BU, which is U. You should get the generator of pi one of U. Can we identify this generator of pi one of u? There is an obvious choice, and in fact, it works. Uh, because u1, remember, is exactly s1. u1 is the, well, it's the complex numbers of modulo one. Just by definition, if you want this is z, z bar is one. And this, sits inside u sending zeta to sorry zeta to these matrices that are the identity everywhere except from zeta on the top left corner and this is an s1 and i'm claiming that this map this is a pointed map of course since one to one in fact it's a group of morphism even and i'm claiming that this map is the generator of of uh, pi one u. Uh, this is very natural. I'm sure all of you will believe it, but let me give you a very quick argument that I already hinted at last time. We have a fiber sequence like this that we studied also. Well, I think I talked about it last semester, which, uh, which were since a matrix A to A times E m plus one. And the inclusion is B goes to B001. And this in particular tells you that this map is an isomorphism on pi one by the long exact sequence of homotopy groups. And so UN to UN plus one iso on pi one. And so by induction, you get that the map from U1 to, to U is an ISO on pi one. Because you remember pi one commutes with filter colimits. And so we are done. So we, we know what the the, the pi one of, of S1 is generated by the identity. That's pi one of S1 by Okay, so um, so beta from uh, S2 to BU times Z corresponds to BU1, to, to the vector bundle, sorry, on uh, on U1 given by the identity. That is, we have on BU1, sorry, uh, with clutching function the identity. No, sorry, that's what I mean. Oh, no. 
sorry, uh, to the vector to the sorry to the map s one to u given by z goes to z. Let me say it like this. Okay. Okay. And I claim. So we have a homeomorphism. S2 with CP1 because both are, if you want, the, the one point compactification of C. And this, this vector bundle is the tautological line bundle. on CP1. So what it is, so let me define it for you. Psi is the pairs X comma L in C squared times CP1 such that X is in L. Here I'm identifying the points of CP1 with lines in, in C2. And I just want to say that these, uh, under this homeomorphism, you can think of, of uh, S1, sorry, uh, yeah, S2 is sigma S1. And you can think of the copy of S1 inside uh, sigma S1, that is CP1 as uh, RP1 inside CP1. Right, you take, let me draw it. Maybe this way is clearer. This is CP1 where I'm imagining the border all identified to a point. And I can find RP1 here. So this is the, the real axis, the compactified real axis inside CP1. And this gives me the, the, the suspension. And now, yeah, I now I'm going to leave you as an exercise to compute the trivializations on, on these two halves, in, in these two disks here. Here. And, uh, and see that they differ exactly by the identity for the tautological bundle. That's not, that's not hard at this point. Everything is just writing down a formula and explicitly working it out. Is exercise to compute the clutching function and see that the, it is the identity from S1 to S1. I, I actually did it so I can actually, if you want uh, me to uh, write down all the formulas uh, to, to compute the, the trivializations of these two half disks and etc. But I don't think it's very useful to, to see huge formulas on the board. Everything now is sufficiently explicit that you can indeed see it. And okay, so we're almost there. So we have a map from S2 to BU1, pointed map, adjoint to uh, S1 equals to U1 into U. That's our map beta. But remember, this sits inside BU times Z as the zero component. So there are virtual vector bundles of rank zero. So while our the vector bundle I constructed as rank one, 
And why is that? Well, that's because I'm thinking, when I think of vector bounds of rank one, these seats inside, these come from the map from BU1 times one inside BU times Z. So if you let me write it explicitly, vector bundles of rank one come from BU1 times one inside BU times Z. Instead, I have it inside BU1 times zero. And how do you relate BU1 times one and BU1 times zero? Well, they're related by adding a copy of the trivial bundle. So beta corresponds to the virtual vector bundle, and I call it psi, right? Yes. Psi minus uh, one. By one, I mean the, the trivial vector bundle of rank one. on C, P, 1. And that's what beta is. So to boil down completely, K u, K u 0 s 2 is Z plus K u 0 tilde s 2 is Z times 1 plus Z times the class of psi minus 1. And that's the final point in the identification of the bot map, of the bot, sorry, element, going to become the bot map in a second. But for now, it's just an element on a group. Is this clear? Um, um, sorry, how did you identify beta with, with this um, difference? So beta is the, the Pointed map adjointed. So B beta seen as a map inside BU times zero is the map adjoint to S1 uh, from U1 to U. So in particular, beta comes from this composition from S2 to BU1 times zero inside BU times zero. So in particular, this map is the map classifying the topological bundle on S2, on, on CP1, actually. And the point, uh, now I want to map these into BU times Z. Now remember, BU times Z was this co-limit of this joint union over N of BUN, where you add one copy of the trivial bundle. So BU times, so remember, you have uh, BU times Z sits inside here. Okay, this is the identity. And at every point, this is essentially adding a copy of the trivial bundle, right? And I mean, my BU1 times zero sits exactly inside, inside here. If it's not, it doesn't factor through the, to this factor here. This has only a BU zero that maps to, to BU times zero. So that's not, but this map in general sends BU M plus K inside BU times K at the end stage, right? And so we have uh, uh, so what? What I want to say, yeah. So okay, I guess what I want to say is that what it boils down to is that beta plus one is exactly the class of Xi. Because beta plus one sits inside in, is an element in BU times one that comes exactly from BU one 
times one from xi in b1 times one, right? Because if you have beta here and you, and you add one to that, you end up exactly in, in, in this class of rank one. I mean, essentially the point is that beta has rank zero. It's a vector bundle of virtual vector bundle of rank zero because it sits inside KU tilde zero of S2. And you can always get a vector bundle of rank, a virtual rank zero by taking a vector bundle of whichever rank you have and you subtract the rank. That's a, that's a fairly uh, harmless operation. And that's exactly what's happening here. I have to describe this virtual vector bundle of rank zero and then describing it as a line bundle, so a virtual vector bundle of rank one minus one. And that's as explicit as you can hope to get. I mean, of course, it's not going to come from a, an actual vector bundle of rank zero unless it's a trivial bundle. Because BU zero is just a point. There are no many virtual, there are no many vector bundles of rank zero. Oops, sorry, that's not the one I wanted. Okay. Um, is uh, this computation clear? Because that's the, the bedrock on which we will build all the subsequent computations. Okay, um, the next thing I want to say is that KU star is in fact a multiplicative cohomology theory. And I wish I had time to, uh, to do the whole story of infinity ring spectra, but I don't. So I'll do a patch and just say what a homotopy ring spectrum is. And uh, that's going to have to be enough for now. It's going to be precise and it's going to give all the structure we need for now, but of course, to do proper things, one would need more. So, okay. A homotopy ring spectrum is a spectrum E together with maps unit from S to E and multiplication from E tensor E to E. Uh, such that, so let's see. The usual things you'd expect. The multiplication is unital and it's associative. And here I'm just saying that homotopies exist. That's why it's called a homotopy ring spectrum. I'm not specifying higher homotopies. So let me put a remark. Uh, uh, to get, in general, to, to get a good theory, one would need to specify higher homotopies. Uh, the corresponding object is called an um, infinity ring. Uh, with, sorry, uh, sorry, an, an E1 ring, uh, because this is just an associative ring. It's going to be E infinity when we throw in all the higher homotopies for commutativity. Uh, but uh, we won't have time to talk about those. Unfortunately, I, I wish we had, but... Um, 
uh, for now, let me see. Okay, and say uh, E uh, homotopy ring spectrum is commutative if mu is the same as mu tensor sigma, where sigma from E tensor E to E tensor E is the swap map uh, that we have. Remember, we always have an, um, an equivalence of E tensor F with S tensor E. We have seen that back when we defined the tensor product. And we're asking that, well, that, that's exactly what commutativity ought to mean, right? Um, question. So can only connective ring spectra be uh, connective spectra be ring spectra? So is the addition? No, no. in fact, I would put uh, a, a, multiple, uh, a ring spectrum structure on, on KU, which is ah, very right. far from commutative, uh, sorry, from connective. Uh, uh, because, I mean, the definition here per se just looks like a, it's, it's a monoid, like with multiplication, so. Yes, but this is the tensor product in spectra. Sorry, maybe it should be more precise. This is like when you define a ring as a monoid in abelian groups with respect to the tensor product in abelian groups. But I defined for you a tensor product in spectra. So now this definition. Okay, yeah, but, but because we can all also take non-connective um, uh, spectra, this is, yeah, it's, it's somehow weird. It's more than a ring because I don't have a, a yes, proof yes, structure. Yes, 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 I know. There okay, is well, the, cool. There is this mismatch between uh, uh, spectra and, and commutative mono and, and commutative groups. Uh, that we discussed. Uh, I wish I could give you some deeper intuition about what this means. Uh, I, I cannot really. I mean, this is like working the difference between, you know, positively graded chain complexes and all chain complexes. And sometimes you have to work with all chain complexes. I mean, that's just something you have to do if you want the theory to work better. And uh, we do want because KU is a very powerful and important gadget and it is very far from connective. So, where was I? Yes. Okay, so now my put a remark. If E is a commutative homotopy ring spectrum, The associated cohomology theory is multiplicative. Because that is, there are maps uh, am I going in the right direction? Yes. So, okay, actually, let me be precise. Pi star of E is a ring. No, actually, actually, sorry, let me, let me say it this way. E star of X smash Y has a map from E star of X tensored over Z to E star of Y. Uh, no, of course, the map goes in the other direction because it's a ring. Ah, uh, jeez, not a coring. And how does it work? Well, remember these is homotopy classes of pointed maps from say X to Sigma N of E and these is say homotopy classes of maps from Y to Sig, sorry, Sigma infinity of X, Sigma infinity of Y. And then I want a map from sigma infinity of x smash y, but that's remember is sigma infinity of x tensor sigma infinity of y. And then you can map it to sigma n e tensor sigma m e, just by taking if take f here and g here, you can take f tensor g, and that's just sigma n plus m 
of E tensor E, and then you use your multiplication to get the composition that we want. And also we have maps, um, well, okay. Um, you have a map E star of S zero, a point one, and that's corresponding a e eta from sigma infinity S zero to E. And uh, these satisfy all the multiplicativity and commutativity if you have a commutativity relation uh, that you want. In particular, E star X plus, so unreduced cohomology for X and unpointed space, is a graded ring. Commutative if uh, E is commutative. And that's because you get a map uh, over this X plus tensor E X plus, like in ordinary cohomology, you get a map here to the wedge product of this thing, which remember is just X times X plus. And you can pre-compose with the diagonal. And this gives you a, a ring structure. There are, of course, associativity and excitor relations to be verified. Sorry, not commutative. That's force of habit. Of course, I meant graded commutative. Since this is graded the beginning groups. And the graded commutativity actually comes from the fact that the antipodal map on S2 is multiplication by minus one on homotopy groups, which is um, well, okay. Um, which I'm sure everyone can prove it. Okay, so why did I mention this homotopy ring spectrum? Is because KU is one. So proposition KU star, yeah, sorry, KU is a homotopy commutative ring spectrum. And Okay, and the proof is going to depend on a choice, unfortunately. In fact, the choice is not going to be a choice at all because uh, all the choices will be homotopic. In fact, there's going to be a contractible space of choices. And so all the multiplication maps are going to give you are homotopic. But this is, in this ambiguity actually hits the complexity of the notion of infinite ring spectrum that I'm sidestepping. So let me make, let us choose uh, an isometry C infinity tensor C infinity over C with C infinity. For example, a bijection of N times N with N. And then you send EI tensor EJ to E, I don't know, phi EJ. For example. It's not necessarily, in fact, the, the space of such bijections is not to be contractible, but the space of such isometries is, so I'm just fixing. Uh, let me call it phi, such an isometry. Then I get a natural transformation like this. Well, V was that uh, infinity space that I used to define uh, KU. So remember, points are equal 
of vector spaces in in uh, in uh, C C infinity. Then this is J Upo. And I can send this to well, I want to send it to VI tensor WJ. But of course, this is not a subspace of C infinity, it's a space of C infinity tensor C infinity. So I have to fix it with this isometry. And that's why I, I need the isometry. And again, the space of such isometry is contractible. It's a, essentially the same proof as the case of the Stiefel, um, as a, the contractibility of the Stiefel manifold. So it turns out not to matter because of course, if two isometries are homotopic, uh, this map is also homotopic. This is a natural transformation factors. So natural transformation in E plus and J plus. And moreover, uh, if you look at how you define B of V as an infinity space, this yields V to the N, V I plus V to the N, V J plus mapping to V to the N plus N. Remember B, B was just defined. B, B of I plus is just uh, the geometric realization of V I plus smash gap N plus. That was our definition. So you can just add a smash gap N here, a smash gap N, and then you go by, by induction and you every time you, 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 add, you can add a B on each of the factors here, as long as you add a B here. By naturality. And in fact, uh, oh, maybe I should have said it better. This is in fact a smash. That is, I define them up from the product, but if you put just the, the base point, which is just the zero vector space here, of course, you get the zero vector space on the target. I mean, the, the, the base point on VI plus is just the IU pole where all VIs are the zero vector space. And so if you tensor, you get the zero vector space again. Okay. And so we can get a map from the co-limit, omega n, sigma infinity, v n, v, uh, omega n, no, sorry. Also oh, remember this was uh, b infinity of, of uh, V. And the co-limit of omega M sigma infinity B M of V is B infinity of V again. And so B infinity of V tensor B infinity of V is the co-limit over N N on omega N plus M sigma infinity B N of V smash B N of V. Because the tensor product commutes with co-limits in each variable and commutes also with loops because well, we, we proved it. And so we get a map in the co-limit over N M omega M plus M uh, V M plus M V, which is B infinity of V again. Now, maybe I should give a name of this guy. This guy is usually called the little KU. And is indeed the connective cover, 
little KU is the connective cover of big KU. That is, it's the connective spectrum with the same omega infinity. That's just by definition, pretty much. And so we have shown that little KU is a homotopy ring spectrum. In fact, I haven't shown you to you, but of course this map is also symmetric uh, using the symmetry of the tensor product. So in fact, this is going to show that it's a homotopy commutative ring spectrum. But remember, we didn't want little KU, we wanted big KU. So what we want is how to go from little KU to big KU. And now, but pi two, since, since KU is the, is the connective cover of big KU, we have pi two KU is still the same as pi two of big KU, which is Z generated by the bot element. So the bot element is a map, if you want, from sigma to a S little KU. And I want to say that big KU is obtained from little KU by inverting it. And what do I mean? I mean that big KU is the co-limit of this sequence of maps. Where well, this map is obtained by, well, okay, this is S times KU, which maps with, uh, yeah, sigma minus two KU tensor KU, and here with the multiplication. Okay, uh, maybe I should stop one second because I think I'm going quite fast. So is it clear how do I construct the ring structure on little KU? Yeah, And to be completely honest to you, I am skipping a bunch of checks that all the diagrams I'm writing actually commute. That uh, I gave you explicit definitions of all the maps, so hopefully this won't feel too much like cheating, because the, the checks are just you know unwrapping what these definitions are and and see that they indeed commute. Um, okay. And then I want to prove this claim, and this claim is going to imply that big KU is indeed a homotopy ring spectrum as well. Um, why is that? Well, because if assuming this claim, then KU, tensor KU, can be written down as. Uh, well, actually a co-limit of a square diagram, but I'm going to take the diagonal. Like this. 
and then you can map it into KU. by the multiplication at every step. This is, this might be look a bit confusing, but if you look at the definition that, if you look at the proof, so this is like the proof that R with X inverted is a ring for X a ring. The elements here, an element here should be thought of like y over beta square, for example, it's like a fraction. That's actually literally true on their homotopy groups. But Okay, so now let us prove the claim. The proof of the claim is uh, actually not hard. It's basically again about periodicity. I mean, it's basically how I defined KU secretly, big KU, because big KU so remember, let's look at little ku. Let's, little ku as a spectrum starts with bu times z as before. Then it takes its de-looping, which is u. It's connected de-looping, and then it takes its simply connected de-looping, which is, however, bu. And then you take its connected de-looping of that guy, uh, which is su. And the gone, and the, 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 the previous ones are not uh, are not sorry. The, the, the following ones are not as explicit, but they only care about here up to here. So sigma two ku then is let's uh, yeah, u is shifts on the right. And here actually there is a BU. A shift two steps on the right. Remember, sigma was a shift. Sorry, the sigma minus two is the same thing as omega two. I think I said that at some point I will use sigma minus one as, as omegas in spectrum. And this map beta is, well, it's the identity here, the identity here, and here is the inclusion of the connected component. Here is uh, well the inclusion of the subgroup. Whatever. The next one actually for what is worth, I think it's BSU. Yeah, of course it's BSU. The next one. But it's, it's not important. Again, look at this column. This is actually the, the universal cover of this space, if you want. Um, so uh, the KU downstairs is a big KU? No, no, this is a little KU. And, and so I have a map beta from sigma minus two S to KU, which corresponds to picking out uh, pi zero one in pi zero of BU here. And then considering this map, KU, uh, sorry, sigma two, ooh, no, sorry. Yes, uh, by, what do you want to say? Yeah, sorry. 
uh, by two bu times z. Sorry, it's corresponding to this map. Uh, maybe I should say by one of u, whatever. That's probably that's probably easier. And by one, I actually don't mean the generator. I mean this is a z, and, and I don't mean the the trivial element. I mean the generator of the z, which is by one of u. And so I can consider the map. I, I can see these as a map also from S to sigma minus two of KU, which is what I actually wanted to, to say. Yes. And so I can consider the map from KU, which is S tensor KU to sigma minus two of KU tensor KU. Take sigma minus two of the multiplication goes to sigma minus two of KU. This is beta times one. This is multiplying by the bot element, which is the bot map. Uh, now I'm just confused because sigma minus two KU should just be a shift by two of KU. Yes, which is what this is. I shift on the right. But I mean, I'm starting at zero, but actually secretly there is a minus one, minus two, and et cetera, which are not very interesting because they're just copies of U and BU and Z. Actually, let me, maybe this is clear if I number how these things work. Zero, one, two, three, four. And let me add. The minus one, minus two. And you see that the bottom line is the top line shifted on the right twice by two. And I'm claiming that this map is, well, it's not a very interesting map uh, downstairs. Uh, the point is that we know, for example, that this element here is the sim is is the connect. Sorry, this is the connected the looping of U, and so it's BU by definition. And we know that this map here, BU times BU times Z, the map at level two, has to be. the map um, actually it's probably clear it's probably not very clear because this u here i'm already secretly using bot periodicity to describe it i'm using the fact i bot periodicity u is b of b u times z And this map is the, sorry. I guess it's the, it's, uh, the point is that the map at level one, one is the equivalence of B, B, U times Z, which is actually what should, I should have written at level one in B infinity mapping to u and know that we have an equivalence which is beta which is the map coming from the bot periodicity and that's the map i'm using only i'm secretly identifying b of bu and z with u and so i'm claiming that the map is the identity this might be confusing perhaps Point is that this map, I am claiming that this map is this map. And why is this why is this claim sensible? Well, because KU to sigma minus two of KU is a map from a connective spectrum to another spectrum. 
And so by the universal property of the connective cover, these factors through the connective cover, KU to T greater or equal than zero, sigma infinity minus two of KU. But I'm claiming that what Bot Periodicity is telling us is that this is KU again. Because the omega infinity of sigma minus two of KU is just omega two of BU times Z, which by Bot Periodicity is BU times Z again, which is the omega infinity of KU. And this map multiplication by beta is exactly the map corresponding to the identity here. Because it is, well, because it is uh, this map. Beta is defined as to be this map secretly. And not secretly, explicitly even. And so you can see now, if you look at this map beta and you apply it again, shifted and shifted, this is all making my diagram shift on the right, like here. So when you go to, to infinity, just u and u times z cover everything. So you'll end up with big KU. Okay, So at the limit, the spaces of Lin Colin, sorry, Colin KU sigma minus two KU sigma minus four KU, etc., are exactly those we used to define big k and so well and so we are done Okay, why did I want to say that big KU is a multiplicative cohomology theory, except that it, you know, it is interesting. Uh, and oh, and okay, remark, looking at the definition, the ring structure on KU zero of X is given by tensoring of vector bundles. That's how it is. Oh, and maybe I didn't define what a tensoring of a vector bundle is actually, uh, but uh, it is what you expect. So if you have vector bundles, P E to B and P prime, E prime to B, you can form E tensor E prime as, uh, well, the, the, the vector bundle whose fibers, whose fiber over B in B is the tensoring over C of the fibers of E and D prime. And this actually makes sense because you can look at local trivializations. Or if you want, you can say it's, it's universal for bilinear maps, just as the usual tensor, uh, tensor product of vector bundles, uh, vector spaces. And okay. And the reason why I said that is because proposition, I want to say what KU tilde star of S2n is. K 
KU tilde star of S2n is just Z generated by this class that generated KU, um, sorry, KU tilde zero. Uh, Q tilde zero of S2, but then you tensor itself to the n, you take the nth power. So I'm using this ring structure to, to deduce. So remember, we had a map from Ku tilde zero S2 tensor Ku tilde zero of S2 coming. Ku tilde zero of S2 smash smash two is to the n. So uh, this is what it is. I'm claiming essentially I'm claiming that this map is an equivalence. It's an isomorphism. And to do that, I'm going to prove a stronger statement. And to prove that this map is an isomorphism for every x, this multiplication map. And this proof might surprise you uh, because it's, it's very, Oh, sorry, not x, uh, sigma 2x, of course. And the proof is, well, this is a map of cohomology theories. Right. Uh, because uh, uh, this is just a Z secretly. So the left hand side is non canonical, well, even canonically, just KU tilde star of X. And the right hand side is just precomposing with the suspension, which also preserves all the structure of cohomology theories. So corresponds to a map of spectra, which is, uh, remember this is just KU tilde star of X. So this is a map of spectra from KU to Sigma minus two of KU. Since these are the spectra representing the cohomology theories. because maps from sigma infinity sigma to x ku tilde is the same thing as maps from sigma infinity x sigma minus two ku tilde. And if you look at what this map is, this was the multiplication map. So this is again the multiplication by beta map from ku to sigma minus two of ku. KU is defined exactly so that this map is an equivalence. So, okay, one last computation. And we are done, I think. Questions about this argument? This is slightly uh, trickier. This is, this is slightly cheaty in some sense. Uh, normally, I'll be honest, normally the proofs of both periodicity go through proving that this map is an isomorphism for every X and deducing both periodicity out of it. I'm doing it backwards compared to the usual story. 
but well, I I, I like this this argument. Um, I wanted to present it to you. Okay. Let me finish with the latest computation, which is KU tilde star of CPN. And I claim that this is KU tilde star plus KU tilde star of psi minus one. That was for CP1. Then you need to add psi minus one square until the star psi minus one to the n as a, sorry, uh, as a, no, sorry, not tilde. Why am I putting it tilde? I don't want tilde. As a KU star module. And these, you should think of it as the analog of the formula that the cohomology of CPN is Z plus ZX plus ZX to the N. In classical, in classical cohomology. And remember in the ring structure, actually here you prove that it's Z to the N modulo XN, X to the N plus one. Here it's not going to be true anymore that the n plus one power of these is trivial. It's going to be a linear combination of some of the other things, uh, but I don't want to to write it because it's uh, well. I mean, I could, but okay. Uh, let me not. So the proof is by induction on n. And uh, you start, the idea is to consider this cofiber sequence. Cofiber sequence S2 to the N. So if you think about it, CP to the N is some kind of compactification of uh, C to the N. Uh, with with exactly a cpn minus one at infinity so if you want this is the map sending x to zero dot x and so if i collapse the whole part at infinity i'm just left with an sn this is if you want the standard cell structure on cpn and so we get a sequence C P N K U two I K U two I C P N minus one mapping to K U two I uh, plus one S two to the N and these get some up from K U two I of S to the N and get some up from K U um, 2i minus 1, uh, cpn minus 1. That's just a long exact sequence in cohomology. And now this is 0 and this is 0. Now that these by the, the cpn minus 1 by induction and these by the computation we already did. And this is z times this bot class to the n. And up to no, oh, sorry, I want the, the reduced cohomology here. So otherwise, it's not zero. Of course, is the one of the point. So by induction, we have that this is z psi minus one 
z phi i one minus one to the n minus one. And so in fact, this is split because this has a section because all these free basis elements uh, lift because the, the, cannot, the, the tautological bundle of CPN, of course, restricts to the tautological bundle of CPN minus one. So we know that essentially we have shown that this is this object, sorry, up to n minus one plus a term, which is just a z by the previous computation. And so the only need, thing we need to verify is that psi minus one to the n restricts to the generator of KU tilde zero S to N. That is, it's trivial on CPN minus one. And okay, that we knew, but, um, and it restricts to this generator on KU zero S N. And the way to do that is to notice that you have a commutative diagram like that. Oh, sorry, S2. Well, okay, the right vertical map is just a collapse map that kills off the CPN minus one. Uh, this map is just, again, the collapse map that collapses everything but the top cell. If you want, this is the, the wedge. So we collapse. And this map is actually the slightly trickier one. Uh, this is the symmetrization map, um, which Let's see if I write this as A1, B1, AN, BN. This is sending me to the coefficients of the polynomial A1 plus B1X, AN plus BNX. So this is a degree n polynomial, so you get n plus one coefficients and you write them in order and it gives you a point of CPN. Uh, that's, you, you can of course write the formulas if you want, but uh, it's, uh, and you have to check that in fact, this is, uh, this commutes, but the point is that you have to, in this, in this vertical map here, you have to kill all elements that have a base point in one of the factors. And the, the base point in, uh, in one of the factors is um, correspond to choosing a zero, one. And, and if you have a and if you have zero one here in some of the factors, the, uh, the, the constant term here is trivial. And so this gets killed by this collapse map. It lands into, into CPN minus one. So in fact, this diagram does commute. Okay, you have to check uh, that the, the other maps as you'd expect, I guess you have to check because you have to choose an equivalence like this. And I saw an homeomorphism of S2N with the smash product so that this works. But the point is that this map is a, is a homeomorphism outside of when you remove, you know, all the, the, the pieces containing a base point here, because every polynomial has a unique factorization. So let's see. And okay, I'm out of time. So let me just say, you want you, you take the generator here, 
of KU tilde S to N. And you want to say that when you pull it back to here, you get the tautological bundle. Sorry, you get the nth power of the tautological bundle. And what you actually show is that when you pull it back all the way here to this product of CP1s, you get the tensor power of the tautological bundle of each, where each of the factors. And that you can do along uh, this map. And you see that it is indeed what you want. And okay, I think I don't have time to give more details. And sorry if this was a bit unstructured, this, this, this class, but uh, well, I hope it was interesting anyway. And then uh, we'll start uh, on, in January with, uh, uh, with uh, rationalizations, inverting primes, uh, completion of spectra and, uh, and all sorts of things. And uh, we will use K-theory as an example in, in, in this story. And after that, we'll start, finally start talking about Atiyah duality, which is the spectral version of Poincaré duality for general cohomology theories, and then Tom's theorem on the classification of manifolds up to Bortism. And uh, I don't know if we'll have time to do more than that. Uh, if we will, I might do a very brief introduction to spectral sequences, but no promises there. Um, we, we see how much time, I absolutely want to do the, the two things I described and uh, see how, how much time we have left afterwards. Okay. Questions? So if you consider this K you reduced Sigma N, then you get some cohomology theory. Does it have some like naive interpretation? Uh, KU, KU tilde? Yeah, yeah, KU tilde. KU tilde, well, KU tilde is, is too periodic, so there is no, not much to be said. KU tilde i of x is KU tilde zero of x, which if you notice are virtual vector bundles with rank zero over the base point. So that's, that's clear, I mean, clear, as clear uh, and geometric as these things come. Uh, and then if, if, so if I is even and maps from pointed maps from X to U, if I is odd, uh, which I don't know if it's clear or not. Uh, I don't have a better description, but hopefully this is like, Oh, and the point is that if if x is compact, sorry, this is all if x is compact, it's just a union of pointed maps from x to u n. So you can think of a map as, I don't know, associating a matrix. You can think of these, I don't know, automorphisms of x times cn of the trivial vector bundle of rank n uh, that preserve the trivial, that are the identity over the base point, sorry, because they're still reduced. Uh, I don't know if that's geometric or not. Uh, uh, this is as geometric as these things come. So, I mean, you don't get uh, much more. In fact, it is an, an open problem um, for a different cohomology theory that's somehow analog to, to KU, actually to KO more than KU, which is called TMF. It is still an open problem to construct such a geometric description. Um, it's people will be very interested in having such a thing because the, that cohomology theory has very nice properties, uh, but of course, nice properties as a cohomology theory are sometimes not enough. You sometimes also want to, to understand what it means. And for, for key theory, we lacked out. We have a very explicit description in these terms. I don't know if that's explicit enough for, for you, Joachim. Uh, Well, maybe another question then, uh, slightly more general, I guess. So I very much enjoyed the E infinity groups and I was wondering, would you like to put some references in the notes uh, about I... where to look about E infinity rings? 
if oh, you're done. Infinity fast. Rings. Uh, you that's a difficult them? question. Uh, yeah, I am going to put references in the notes. Uh, unfortunately, I know two, only two types of references. Classical references that I find extremely hard to read. Uh, and more modern references that require a lot of prerequisites, uh, which is why I, in the end I decided not to, to talk about infinity rings, even if I, I would have liked to, because it would require me to construct, act, to actually properly construct the, the symmetric model structure on spectra, like with all precision and details, and then define what a ring is in spectra in a symmetric model infinity category. Uh, which is not the hardest, but it is a bit abstract. Honestly. The alternative is uh, that, okay, to, to be, I, I'll put it in the notes, but to put it briefly, uh, the, the, the three references I would give, uh, so there is a paper by May, what are infinity ring spaces and infinity ring spectra, which is on the classical side. It's one of the first papers in which these things were defined, which I find extremely hard to read. Um, but you do see the connection with isometries and isometric embeddings and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, the, e, the, the book by Stefan Schwede, which is already in the, in the general references, covers this material, even if so briefly. And of course, for the modern approach, there is higher algebra, which is very clean, but also uh, very demanding on a technical level. Um, I mean, the name higher algebra is of the, of the whole book is essentially a study of, of uh, higher ring structures, but it's very technically demanding. Um, and the point is that we didn't want to define what an infinity operator is uh, because, uh, it, it would take a while. Oh, also actually a, a good and good introductory reference uh, somehow orthogonal thing, which I might add that uh, there are these notes by Jonathan Harpas, which gave a class in Paris 13 a couple of years ago, while I was there, um, where he gave us somehow a geodesic path. His goal was to talk about uh, factorization homology, which uses essentially infinity rings and so on. And I think he, strikes a good balance between giving all the details and trying to aim at a definite goal, which is um, good. Actually, yeah, I should add those notes. Those notes are good. Uh, I should add those notes as references. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? If not, Merry Christmas to you all, and hopefully we will meet each other in 2021. Uh, fingers crossed if, if this doesn't get any worse.